How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? The All-Star Week is basically upon us. I don't know if we have anybody looking real good. Uh, if we look at closers, you would expect Paul Sewell to be there, but fourth uh, in the voting, he's uh, quite a ways behind Ryan Presley. Uh, who, who, how many saves does he have? 30 saves? Yeah, okay, that's fair. Paul Sewell does have 26 saves in 33 appearances, which I think is pretty impressive, but it's not enough to get the nod. At least at the moment, do we have anything else looking good for us? In left field, Jared Kelnick's there, but sitting quite a ways back of Giancarlo Stanton. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Mitch Haniger is sitting in the second spot uh, in the right field. He is quite a ways behind Kyle Tucker in the voting. More at-bats, fewer home runs, more RBIs, fewer stolen bases, and a higher batting average. So this one probably going Tucker's way, but at least we're getting close to some all-star players. But with just four games to go before that, I don't think that much is going to happen for us. Starting-wise, we've got uh, Nick Margevichis. Uh, again, still no idea if I'll say that correctly the first time on an episode, but you never know. Can we win on the road against the Rangers? 5-7 loss, 3-1 win, 3-1 win, and uh, the All-Star Futures game? Well, let's take a look at that. Well, this is kind of going to be a difficult decision to make because we've got two guys. We've got Noel V. Marte, our shortstop, who I think is going to be incredible for the team. 74 overall at the age of 20, a potential, looking good. Uh, we're going to definitely be spending as much money as we need to to keep him around. But also at first base, uh, batting cleanup is Jake Shiner, the 26-year-old, uh, 67 overall player in our double A system. He's got up quite a bit so far this season, looking way more serviceable. And I've never noticed that. He could play literally anywhere on the field. First, second, third, shortstop, and everywhere in the outfield. He's just missing the catcher and pitching, but I'm sure if you put him there, he would do okay. I do feel like we have player locked as Noelvi though, so we're going to hop in with Jake, see what he can do in this all-star game. Always fun to let the uh, young guys get a chance at uh, some big experiences or big ballparks. And we're going to come up here with a runner on first. And maybe a chance to do something in Dodger Stadium. Nice, beautiful weather for this All-Star game in the middle of the summer. He's batting 320 this year. That's impressive. You know, we would want to see that a little bit higher to bring him up, though. Quickly, 1-0 count. Can we get the homer? Because it's homer or bust. We're in an All-Star game. That's what we really want to see. 2-0 count. Swinging at the slider, we just tip it foul. Last episode, anything off speed, we were a mile in front of. So hopefully we can try to fix that today. 2-1. We get on the fastball. That's a quick fastball, though. 100 miles an hour, we foul it off, and it's quickly 2-2. So things turning in a hurry in this at-bat. <laughs> off speed, man. <laughs> All right, so we have, not, uh, we have not figured it out since the time of the last episode. That's a rough strikeout. Coming now to the bottom of the first, playing a little bit of defense. Can we get a double play here? That's kind of what I'm expecting to see. This one batted to the third baseman. Good on second. And we're a little bit late getting the ball here. So prevent the runner getting the second. And they picked up uh, four runs. Well, that inning or potentially this inning, which is pretty rough. This one looks kind of like a carbon copy. Same guy, I feel like. Uh, both of them 88 speed I don't know that was really rough so we're just getting obliterated I do get the opportunity to bat with two runners on top of the third two outs and we got on it is it going to be enough pushing left field and it's just too easy a little bit too low power that's a tough one to be able to hit out when it's that low in the zone just unfortunate well, runners on first and second no outs 0-2 count. This one's hit towards us. I'm making just the double play throw. Thought about throwing it to first, but these guys have been quick all day long. So throw it to second. Get back on the bag. Get our two outs there. I would call that the right defensive play is, oh no, top of the fifth. And now we have another chance at magic. Base is loaded. Can we tie it? Looking for the grand slam pitch. That one was tempting. The high just floating slider. One that you could potentially key up on. 
1 0 count. We popped it up. <laughs> That's a bummer. Team did manage to get a run. No thanks to me. Bottom of the sixth. And we just have to go step on the bag really quickly. I've noticed, like, almost everybody playing in this game is really, really fast. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe we can get a win still. Unfortunately, we don't get the chance. I'm curious to know how Noel V. Marte did, but we are getting pinch hit for. Okay, I guess we're going to go through the pinch hitting. Even though we were player locked, we've just skipped out of that. Uh, who's on, who's on first for me? Do I know? It's not Noel V. Marte. 1-0. I don't care about this guy. We're going to swing. <laughs> uh, we don't need to boost another minor league guy's stats. Well, the game wants me to go ahead and play out the rest of this one, but uh, we were player locked for a reason, so we will go ahead and simulate the rest of it. Uh, kind of doesn't look good for us. It's a 6-1 loss. Nuove Marte goes three for three on his day. Uh, three at-bats, three hits. I'm pretty impressed. Uh -oh. To be fair, Noel V. Marte is the guy that I do think I'm going to be more impressed with. Very excited to see him get called up. But we have more pressing matters. We are tied, or we are leading in this series 2-1 with a chance to win it 3-1 and a chance for Paul Sewald to get another save. It's not going to be enough for him to make it to the All-Star game. But at least he can plead his case is we got to plead our case with the ump here <laughs> no call on that obvious strike extra innings runner on second one run lead we got to be worried for sure here is that one was a little bit rough so it's quickly 2-0 throwing fastballs they almost exactly where i want them but we're not getting the calls should be a strikeout on that one or should be sorry just oh two but we got a battle there's our second strike 2-2 now what can we do? Will we have the opportunity to get this strikeout? We got him swinging. Oh, man. You know, every time I miss high on those uh, strikeout pitches, they somehow swing, and we get lucky anyways. Leone Tavares up to bat now. One out for the Rangers, and we get him swinging on the first pitch. That is exactly what we want to see. How about we try to get him with the slider early? He does foul it off, but it puts him very quickly 0-2. We can maybe go to that slightly outside two-seamer. And he fouls it off. Oh, not exactly where we wanted to place it. Not a bad spot either. And we can pitch around him a little bit. Get him swinging. He again, missing the high fastball. Out number two. Another chance for a save for Paul Seawald. We don't see these a lot. Designated hitter up here. And Ibanez looks at ball one. That's another one of those awfully questionable calls from the ump, but we just uh, have to make him think about it by sending the second pitch to the same spot as he fouls it off. And as we like to do, just kind of change where the batter's looking, get him swinging at the slider down low, and maybe we can get him sliding it one away for strike number three or striking number three on one high in the zone. Ibanez way out in front of it, and we get the win. Ooh, that's a 3-1 that's a series win against... Uh, a divisional opponent who is in front of us in the standings. That was super useful. That feels like a good way to start the episode. 3-1 through the uh, four-game series. And now uh, well, we have a trade offer from the Red Sox. I feel like they've done this before. Rich Hill. Didn't they offer us Rich Hill before? Uh, 42 years old. For Yeah, this is like the same trade that we've seen already. Go ahead and decline that and move on to the double A Central All Star game where we have Noel V. Marte. We're going to sim it though and see what he does. Well, we can't get it. Uh, apparently, we don't know. But uh, we won, I think. I don't know CSCN. I don't know who won what, but we're there. And now the All Star game. I don't know who won the, the home run derby. I uh, kind of, I don't know. I hit a button and now we can't see it all. And Jesse Winker just uh, pulled his lower back. So we're going to lose him for a little bit. But Logan Gilbert back from being injured is huge for us. We get a good starting pitcher back into the rotation. And Jesse's just gone for six days. But I'll start break anyways. So he can just kind of rest up. Hopefully come back better than ever. And uh, we're just going to... I mean, we don't have an all-star. So why would we play in this game? The AL has defeated the NL, so I guess that's good news for us. Uh, again, we're not worried about AAA All-Star game. 
Uh, but there's a home field advantage for one of the teams. I, I don't know which league we are. <laughs> to just being honest. All that matters to me at this point is that we are in a good spot here for the end of July. We're starting to run low on the amount of games left in this season. Just a couple of months. And what are we? Nine games back of the lead, which is now split between the Angels and the Astros. And six games back of 500. This is huge for us. Playing two series against the Astros to end, this, uh, to end the month in a series against the Rangers. We've struggled against both teams. We've gotten wins against both teams. That was a 1-6 loss as the Giants are offering. Uh, they want Paul Seawald. Uh, this is almost guaranteed a no. They're willing to give up a, a prospect in Seth Corey, who looks okay, but he's 67 overall and is nowhere near ready with a C potential. Who's this shortstop? Uh, Averson Ortega? I don't know if that's how you would pronounce that. Uh, shortstop comes after third base. He's 19. The good, not even good potential. Not a good overall. And it's Paul Seawald. You think that I'm going to even think about getting rid of the man who has won so many games for us? No shot. Honestly, I'm a little bit offended by that. <laughs> Let's see. Can we win the series? Well, we're going to have to do some batting. Actually, we already won this one. I'm not going to play this. Uh, it's 11-2 to two in the bottom of the seventh. We're just seeing if uh, Suarez can hit another home run, but uh, it's a 12-3 win. There's no no reason for us to hop into that in an 0-6 loss against Houston and end the series as the A's want to make a trade. We know they don't have a whole lot to work with, but who knows if this is a good enough center fielder. We're not necessarily high on Jack Larson. 26, D potential, 63 overall, playing down with, what, Las Vegas? He has gotten better this season. Uh, just uh, batting 240 in the minors, barely positive war. I, I would tend to want to keep our players involved as much as possible. Jack is, well, honestly, this is one that I wouldn't hate. I mean, Jack's only batting 264 in double A. Uh, yeah. We will we will accept this trade. It hurts maybe our... Well, we have quite a bit of right field depth. So we'll trade a right fielder for a center fielder who's a year younger, but the same overall. Um, and it feels like both guys have improved quite a bit this season. If nothing else, you know, shake things up. We got to have changes in the organization. And that one works in our favor. Logan Gilbert pitching for the first time in who knows how long here. Uh, we got this homestand against the Rangers, and we'll see if we can get him the win. I say that, but I'm fairly certain uh, he's not still pitching. So, Mitch Hanager up to bat. We've seen it many times this season. Can we see it again? Down a run. No outs in the bottom of the ninth. We got on that one. It's pushing, but it's not going to push enough. That one was almost no power. A very short fly out. I'm more than happy with that pitch. As Kyle Lewis comes to the plate, I feel like I don't swing on good pitches enough because I'm worried about the count. So we do lay off on the circle change there for a very lucky called ball one. I don't know if we'll get that every time. <laughs> oh, slurve. Got me swinging out of my shoes. Should be 2-0. It is 1-1. Kyle Lewis, two for three on the day. I can't hit a slurve to save my life. What can we do in the two strike count, if anything? Pitch coming. Uh, we just pop it up. Another slurve. And that's out number two. Maybe Jared Kelnick can do something for us. <laughs> that was terrible. It's the freaking slurve again. Worst pitch for me to swing on. Good timing, at least that time, but. <laughs> oh, not the best at bats I've ever seen. Logan Gilbert in his first game back there gave up eight hits in five innings with five earned runs. That's that's pretty rough. Oh, man, you hate to see it. We're approaching the trade deadline, so that's why we're getting so many offers, and we have another one for the Red Sox. They want to give us Rich Hill. <laughs> I'm not taking Rich Hill. I don't know why they think... Now that he's injured, too, why do you think I want Rich Hill? Can I just say no, never in a million years? So annoying. Uh, all right, game two against the Rangers. This time we're in the lead, but, uh, you know, we're 
we're not going to hop in in a 9-2 game. We try to play the close games. That one, we're going to win 9-3, which is great news. And as is the case for us, it's more injuries. Billy Hamilton with the broken collarbone. So he's pretty much out for the rest of the season. Our big 9-3 win. Trade deadline is now six days away. And we'll see if anybody, you're five days away. We'll see if anybody continues to come to us with good offers. Oh, here we go. A chance to walk it off with Adam Frazier. Back from his injury. One for four on the day. Runners on first and second with no outs at home. What can we do? First pitch swinging it. Puts it into the gap. I'm sending him home. Oh, this is so risky. I didn't think that that was going to be as close as it was. The throw to the plate's off. <laughs> We're going to tie it up. That was so risky. The base running aggression pays off, but it's only because they dropped a diving catch. That one hung up in the air a lot more than I expected, but now we have it tied up. They're playing the in infield in. Uh, JP Crawford, I feel like, can definitely sneak it past one of these guys. And, I mean, their outfield, not the strongest arms. Wouldn't mind sending one. John King, first pitch was a strike. Second one inside for ball one. Just uh, feel, felt really aggressive on that first pitch. Went swinging. It worked out well enough. This time, the cutter just gets inside for strike two. Uh, I cannot just strike out without swinging, so we're going to be battling. And we get one into left field, down for a base hit. I can't send him home. We're going to load the bases with no outs. That was a pretty solid throw. No way we were running home there for the walk-off. But speaking of walk-offs, it's Ty France up against a lefty. Base is loaded. The base hit does it, but so does a walk. So we're going to force him to throw us strikes. Unless there's an absolute meatball of a pitch, I will not swing until we are at a two-strike count. That was a pretty meaty pitch. 1-1. <laughs> one, one. Oh, swinging. It's that dang circle change again. And now it's 1-2, and now I can technically officially swing. Uh, we'll see if we can get on something. Everything going low. I thought I held off long enough. I knew it was the circle change. I just couldn't get there. So they get us out, and, uh, well, now we're in double play position. But it's Mitch Hanager up to bat. How does that cutter hit the zone? That's brutal. Mitch is 0 for 3 today. We're looking for some action. Oh, <laughs> I can't hit this circle change up to save my life. I know when it's coming. It's like almost every other pitch. We just can't get there. 0-2. Oh, I'm swinging at a sinker in the dirt. I am full on struggling. First pitch was okay. And this one tapped. They called it foul? I don't know about that. I mean, we're still alive, but that would have been, I don't know, probably a double play. So we should be glad about it. <laughs> I can't hit this pitch. It's so incredibly frustrating. So many balls on that at bat that I'm swinging at. Maybe we could have gotten the walk. As we do watch the sinker go in, Kyle Lewis 180 on the season with runners in scoring position, and he's got two of them to work with. Just needs to get one man home. <laughs> it's the worst. I legitimately cannot hit this dang circle change. A six mile an hour headwind means it's going to be difficult for us to drive the ball deep as I just, I watched the cutter come in. I, don't, I was kind of stunned, to be honest. Quickly one and two. Could be going to extra innings. Oh, there we go. That'll wind him home. Finally able to hold off on the circle change. And we walk it off. Oh, my gosh. What is it? Fool me ten times? Shame on me. <laughs> Kyle Lewis gets it done. We can celebrate. That's a big win. Kyle Lewis, man. He uh, gets uh, the win. Three for three. Paul Seawald actually technically got a win. That's pretty good. Paul Seawald, a 2.19 ERA at the moment, by the way as we do win that series against the Texans. So we'll three and three so far on the day and an offer from the Dodgers. The Dodgers looking to maybe drop a little bit of uh, salary here. They are struggling with the budget. They're offering us Andrew Haney, 30 year old, 74 overall starting pitcher. Uh, he's, you know, worth 8.5 million. And we give up uh, a pitcher who is, he's going to be worse, Asher, 68 overall. So 
a solid six overall lower and three years older, but we save $8 million. So for that reason, I am out. Shout out for Barbara there. Uh, Houston, can we win some games? Three in a row, four in a row, and the Padres are going to give us Tatis? No, uh, Efren Contreras. Uh, man, everybody must think that we need starting pitchers. 22 years old This uh, for Ty France. Man, it's like uh, they're trying to fleece us. I, I'm not giving up our starting first baseman, who's much better than Mike Ford, for uh, a very mediocre prospect. Uh, that's certainly not worth it. Man, maybe we need to be the one to fleece a team. We are almost at the trade deadline. Uh, unfortunately, we're just going to finish this series and call it good for this episode. Going to be kind of a short one. That's another win. And today is the trade deadline. So, uh, we are going to... I don't know. We're going to play the game against Houston. We're, we've won five straight. We are just uh, three games back of 500, nine games back of the lead there. But this is interesting. I know we didn't just trade Ty France, but I am still thinking about it. Uh, he's batting 219, which isn't terrible. Uh, nine home runs, 35 RBIs, but a negative one war. Uh, what are what are the rest? What are his batting stats looking more like? Um, his OPS is 592. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna see what we can get for Ty France here. It might hurt us, but uh, hopefully we can have somebody fill in at first base, or maybe we trade for a first baseman. We'll see. Well, this is going to be interesting. I don't know what we're going to get for Ty France yet, but we are trading the Yankees for Anthony Rizzo. This move is interesting, and I don't feel like we're fully fleecing them because they're dumping a guy whose salary is $16 million, and we're going to be stuck with that next year, no matter what. 32-year-old uh, Rizzo, 80 overall, is an improvement over Ty France. He's a better batter. Uh, he's doing about the same. Uh, his OPS is higher. How's this war? Better war by 0.9. Um, so that's solid. They get not the best players, but again, they save a ridiculous amount of money in the trade we give them a really solid prospect catching the ball in jake and 25 years old 72 overall definitely can make something his fielding's got a little bit worse this year but his batting is improved and then we throw in uh the second baseman prospect who's 23 at 59 this part makes me feel like maybe we're fleecing them a little bit but we are going to offer this trade we're gonna get it done and now if we look at our first base ty france can absolutely go Mike Ford backing up there, but uh, we picked up uh, a, a big prospect. I mean, that's a huge pull for a, a team like the Mariners. So very excited to see if Rizzo can do something big for us. Uh, it's kind of an impressive infield that we have now. We'll just see what we can get for Ty France to uh, make things look a little bit better. And I have found our other man, starting pitcher, Tuki Toussaint. 25 years old, 76 overall, very similar age in overall uh, to Ty France, but, you know, we get rid of a first baseman. We increase the rotation a little bit more. Um, he's contracted with his arbitration till 2025. He's only 700,000. Uh, he throws a pretty quick fastball, decent curveball and splitter. He's, uh, I don't know, he's, he's looking pretty good. 4.8 ERA, 1.49 whip with a negative 0.5 war, but it's still better than the negative one war that Ty France has. It's an even trade on salaries. It gets rid of a piece that we're looking to get rid of and it increases our pitching staff. It seems like a great deal. The Braves agree. And just like that, we've made a couple of big trade deadline trades. And I have actually looked at getting rid of Billy Hamilton. There is not a single team that wants to trade uh, for him for anything uh, nothing's coming up in the suggested trades so I guess we're just gonna have to hold on to him for now uh, but we make a couple of really big moves there I think I'm really curious to see what that's gonna do for us and actually let's just go ahead and hop into this game and we'll play airlock as Anthony Rizzo batting sixth for us today we're at the top of the seventh two outs which means nobody's done anything what can Rizzo do in his first at bat as a Seattle Mariner against Lance McCullers Jr. First pitch inside for ball one. Rizzo with 264 career home runs. Wouldn't mind adding another one. We've seen us hit a lot of home runs 
uh, against the Astros here on the road at Minute Maid Park. And they're pitching all around us very quickly. 3-0, Jared Kelnick on deck. In the shift for these guys. I'm not against swinging in this 3-0 count. Yeah, <laughs> I did a power swing. Good timing on it, but I just got to remember that his contact is so bad. A normal swing there might have gone for the fences. Bit of a disappointment. Now bottom of the second. Houston has scored a run. Double play potential here. Are we quick enough? Got it turned. Man, I didn't realize the bases were like loaded there. But we get out of that jam. Stay alive. Only give up one run. And uh, we'll see if we can do anything this time. McCullers full of confidence. Still plenty of uh, stamina. Just drops the sinker in for strike number one. Runners on first and second base here. Trying to get something done. We tapped the sinker, but that's it. So he's gone back-to-back -back sinkers pretty much in the exact same spot. Pitch three. Going to be well inside. Not going to advance the runners. So it's just a kind of a wild pitch. Gives us the first ball. He was going knuckle curve there. Hopefully he doesn't go circle change. One, two. Ooh, he went circle change, but it was just outside the zone. A lucky call gives us the 2-2 two, two count. Still waiting on something. And he's going to miss with the sinker. So we get the full count here. Runner's going to be moving. Can we get him home? Oh, staying alive with the sinker. With Kelnick on deck, you would feel confident with a walk, but you'd rather just get a base hit here. Or maybe a home run. He left it over the plate. Anthony Rizzo's first hit as a Seattle Mariner is a three-run home run to give us the lead in the top of the fourth. 449 feet, 112 mile an hour exit velocity. That thing was obliterated. You could not ask for a better start. Almost had a home run in the first at bat as well and already starting to pay off. Big trade. He's worth a lot of money, so we need him to be hitting those home runs. Boy, does he look good in that blue. That thing made it to the upper deck, and it looks like we started off something. 6-1 as Verlander is in the pitch in the top of the sixth. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe how yammed that pitch was. And first pitch was a ball, or first pitch was a strike. Second pitch there, the curveball is a, uh, a ball. Losing my mind here. Who very tempted to swing at that two-seamer. Low inside for strike number two. Trying to battle on this one. Oh, <laughs> we got on it just early. Almost sent it. There's a tailwind here. Oh my gosh, he got me with the off speed. Good pitch from Verlander. We strike out. Even if it's a one for three day, that's fine. So long as we get the win, will we get another uh, at-bat is the, the real question. Yes, top of the eighth, 6-1. Runner on first. And they're going to try to tag him out. There is a double play potential here that we'll have to worry about. 31,000 fans in attendance as Rafael Montero is relieving. His first pitch is outside. We've been lucky to face all righties today. As uh, the control seems to be all over the place for Rafa. 12 pitches in. See how tired he gets. Oh my gosh, that sinker was so beautiful to swing at. I couldn't pull the trigger, so it's strike number one. And again, just I'm having a hard time swinging right now. I'm just like, I'm waiting too much for the perfect pitch. Gets us in a rough spot here. 2-2 two, two is the count. And we fouled off to stay alive. Even if we strike out or fly out here, we want to get as many pitches on Rafael here as possible. Ah, and we just got on top of it. That's going to be the double play to end the eighth inning. Bit of a shame. Good timing on it, but didn't get the contact. So Montero gets out of that inning, but down 6-1. I got a few confident that we get the win here. And, ooh, it's not over yet. So now a chance to maybe get a double play of our own. Corey Lee up to bat. Puts it right to us. Throwing it to second. Trying to make sure we're safe. Get back in time. And it's an error. Oh. 
Well, the good news is it didn't seem to matter at the end of it. We still get the win. Big one on the road. I think that might have been uh, Hamilton that threw that one over. I, I don't know who else it would have been because I don't think it was Adam Frazier. But 6-5. Uh, My goodness. They, they got four runs at the bottom of the ninth. We almost lose the game. Paul Seawald with his 31st save of the season keeps us alive. So the first game in August is a win for us. We are two games back of 500. We are eight games back of the lead, but every game that we get a win on the Astros is big. Oh my gosh. How about the blockbuster trades? Getting it done. New starting pitcher, new starting first baseman. And where are we in the wild card lead or the race? Five games back. If we can just keep beating the Astros when we play them, that's going to look good. And I think we actually have a series here coming up against the Yankees. So we will have Rizzo going to play his former team multiple times here in the next two weeks. And that could be huge for a chance for us to get in that wild card spot. Very excited to see what we can do with the rest of the team as we will start looking at contract extensions in the next episode. I can already tell you some guys are definitely going to be getting theirs. Paul Seawald, I don't care if he's 31, he has earned as many years as he wants with us. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. After that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.